Hi everybody. What I'm talking to you about today I think is going to be a lot more uh, serious of a video. It's something that I think is very important. It needs to be brought to light and I just wanted to put my opinion in there uh, if anybody cares but I just felt like this is a video that I needed to make. On Thursday night CNN aired a film called Blackfish. So just a very, very quick summation, and I'll put a link down below of what Blackfish exactly is and what it's about. It looks at killer whales, otherwise known as orcas, their natural habitat, and it looks um, at what it's like for them in captivity and kind of, I guess, the, the difference, pretty much. You know, it's easy for me to jump on a bandwagon and make a video and say, you know, yes, this is something near and dear to me. I want to help Shamu, but pulled this out of the Taylor archives. I made this in grade one. Yep, grade one. Um, oh, and I got 100% on it. Oh, I even have some pictures of SeaWorld in there. Habitat. Talks about their natural habitat, and the last thing I wrote was, killer whales are often taken from their home in the ocean and put in aquariums. A beautiful picture actually right there of SeaWorld whales. Uh, I didn't know any better, I was seven. And this must have been a SeaWorld fact because they talk about how killer whales have a lifespan of 20 to 30 years, which is actually false. Enemies. Adult killer whales' only enemy are humans. Now I'm going to get to the meat of what I want to talk about. How would you feel if you were inside a bathtub for 25 years? Wouldn't you be a little bit psychotic? And you know, in the movie, they introduce a neurologist who studied many um, killer whales' brains. And, and they say that they have this part in their brain that's much larger than... Um, what we have in our brain as humans, um, and that specific part of the brain does deal with emotion. So it's essentially saying that killer whales are very, very emotional, they're very sensitive creatures, they're not just some dumb fish. They are mammals, keep that in mind as well, they're not cold-blooded, they are warm-blooded animals. So you take something that weighs 6,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds, um, that's how big Tilikum is, you put them in, I mean, yes, Shamu Stadium, I believe it has 3 or 4 million gallons of water, which is yeah, I mean, it'd be fun to play in, but you compare that to the ocean where killer whales swim for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kilometers a day. Let's say I'm pro SeaWorld and I'm saying, no, you know what? Um, having animals in captivity, it educates the public, it helps them from becoming endangered, it lets us get to know them a little bit better. And I mean, like somebody said that, sp that was a um, spokesperson for SeaWorld on CNN Crossfire, you know, if people were not able to go see these animals, they wouldn't know about them and therefore they would be scared of them because there was a movie made in the 70s called Orca and it was all about how orcas were crazy killers. And obviously they're not. They're very docile, sweet. They're like big puppies. Um, yeah, okay. Let's take the education approach. Let, let's say SeaWorld is a great establishment for research. Yeah, okay, let's go with that. How many times seen a killer whale? Seen them wave to each other. You know, like in that show, uh, I believe it's called The Believe Show at SeaWorld. Yeah, they, they do a perimeter wave. Yeah, because that's something you see in nature. Or uh, this. This this is a common thing in nature as well. Just jump, just breaching. Yeah. There's also a show at SeaWorld called Shamu Rocks I was researching. Um, it's set to the popular rock music of today, where sh you and Shamu will have an awesome rockin' time. Really? Because... Pretty sure if you played Bon Jovi in the wild, whales wouldn't dance to it. Hey, no, they say the movie is false. They say the movie um, is inaccurate. Well, then how come when the director approached SeaWorld um, to get their side of it, they wouldn't really give a side. They wouldn't allow the cameras into SeaWorld. I mean, that's their own business. That's their own property. But it's just kind of like you can't disagree with the movie if you wouldn't give your side to the movie. The star of the movie, Telecom. So he actually was, uh, I mean, I can go into his long history, but you guys can watch the movie. Basically, um, he, he was responsible for killing somebody up in Victoria, B.C. when he was first in captivity. He's been abused um, by other whales, by trainers, whatever, whatever. He got sold to SeaWorld. He's at SeaWorld now. He's killed two people at SeaWorld. Okay, that's the long story short. People say that when Don Brancho was killed in 2010, that she was killed because of trainer error, because... Her ponytail distracted the whale. Um, she touched a fish and then she touched her hair and Tilikum was confused. And he didn't know that her hair wasn't really a fish. Okay, again, we're talking about one of the smartest animals in the world and we're doubting their ability to tell a human that has trained them for many decades, as Dawn had, versus a fish 
a dead fish that they're given as a treat. That doesn't, that shit doesn't cut it for me. That excuse doesn't cut it for me. I mean, if you think about it this way, you're inside this tiny little compartment of water and that's where you live and that's where you do your thing and it's boring and you have no stimulation and you don't have any friends and, you know, SeaWorld likes to say, oh yes, all the orcas here are one big family. No, no, they're not actually. They're actually not. They explain in the movie that all pods of orcas, which is what you call a group of orcas, they have a kind of a different language. They explain in the movie that all pods of orcas, which is what you call a group of orcas, they have a kind of a different language. But one pod, one family, they act as a family and they have their own little family traits like a human family and they have their own dialect and their own thing. Um, and all the pods vary. So you take an animal from Washington and you take an animal from Iceland and you take an animal from California and you take an animal from BC, you put them all together, they're, that's not a family. They don't understand each other, they don't communicate, they don't echolocate, they don't, they don't talk with each other, they don't understand each other. It's, you can't just put them together and be like, it's a happy, happy life. Like, no, it's just, imagine this is your life, okay? You spend a couple hours a day doing tricks, getting fish, chilling with your family, whatever, whatever, whatever. Then, your day's over. And you can't go home, because you're in your home, because you're taken from your home. So you're just chilling this big expanse of water. And I'm just looking at it from my perspective. I would be so angry and so frustrated and like, I just, it makes me so mad. It costs $79 to get into SeaWorld for an adult. But then you gotta buy little Bobby, his little Shamu doll, and you gotta go eat dinner with Shamu, and you gotta get the prime seating for the show, and you gotta do this, that, and the other. And it's like, honestly, SeaWorld is a business. They don't give two craps about the animals. If they cared about the animals, then why don't they address the fact that some of these animals are so depressed and bored and unstimulated that they scrape their teeth down to nothing on the gates in, in the pools? Another thing that has never made sense to me when people try to argue it is um, SeaWorld's AI program, Artificial Insemination Program, uh, and Tilikum is the star of that. In the movie, they show taking semen from him and it's just a little bit too whale porny for me. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, they try to say that they are trying to excel at uh, animal husbandry and make sure that the whale population is diversified and ensure that the whales do not become endangered or extinct. And, okay, it's one thing if you're going to take two whales and you're going to make a, a baby, baby whale, a calf, and you're going to put it back into the population and diversify the whale population in the wild. Oh, wait, that's right. Because when a whale is born in captivity... Y'all keep it for yourself, so you can make another Mary Kate and Ashley movie, or keep making Shamu shirts. I think it's difficult because even though Blackfish is an awesome movie and people are really getting riled up and speaking out and letting their opinions be heard, the only way something will be done is if people stop going to SeaWorld and they stop seeing a profit. When surveys were done, um, where people were asked, would you be more likely or less likely to go to a marine theme park or you know, attraction. If orcas weren't there, most people said they wouldn't be affected and they would still be interested in going. Let's talk about whales and educating the public. Yeah, because this is something that whales really love to do in nature. Like, I don't know. I just, I'm so ticked and it makes me really upset that there's no, and I'd like to hear in the comments below, but there's no way to justify SeaWorld. Being little baby orcas from their mothers when they're young, that wasn't to benefit anybody except for you to make a dollar. I can't believe that this establishment has been open, you know, for 40 plus years. I, it's just, it's beyond me. It's animal cruelty. It's, I know PETA is constantly speaking out about this. It's time. It's time that something needs to be done. These are wild animals. They don't need to be in here for a little show and a little dance and a little shamu rocks. People need to stop going. So that's me. That's it for me. Um... Let me know in the comments below what you guys think, if I'm totally off base or what, um, what your thoughts are, if you saw the movie, um, if you want to see it, if you have no interest. Uh, yeah, that's it.